Okay, welcome back to uh, OCR Biology, A-Level Biology 2.1.1 Cell Structure. Uh, we've just been looking at uh, microscopy and we're continuing on to look at microscopy. Let's move on to looking at electron microscopes. So electron microscopes have been developed uh, to solve the problems of resolution with light microscopes. Um, they use a beam of electrons instead of a beam of light and this is a wavelength of 0 0.004 nanometers, so another uh, 100,000 times shorter than light wavelength, which means it gets a resolution of 0 0.2 nanometers, so it can see things which might be bigger than 0 0.2 nanometers. Um, let's have a look at, there are because there are two, principally two main types. Uh, this dirty brick thing here is an example of what an electron microscope might look like. Uh, they are obviously therefore not necessarily suitable for use in schools because they are large and expensive. Uh, and there are principally two types, a transmission and a scanning electron microscope. The transition electron microscope or TEM, um, we're not really going to spend much time to present preparation now, but the idea being that you can cover them in something and stain them with heavy metals to make the specimen show up. Uh, the transmission, the uh, beam of electrons is transmitted through the specimen, hence the name transmission. Uh, it's transmitted through it. Uh, and you get a cross-sectional view as if you've been sliced through it, just like you would with a light microscope. Um, so you get the image focused onto a film, just as you would do with one. Let's look at scanning electron microscope, again coated with some kind of metal, but this time it's scanned and reflected off the surface to give you a pseudo 3D image, it bounces off. So you get the idea of what the outside of a cell or a tissue, part of tissue or organs might look like. So transmission, sliced through, scanning, exterior surface. Um, so it passes through and we've got some examples. It's a 2D image for a transition electron microscope. Um, highest magnification is 500,000 times or to 2 million times for the best quality ones. Here's some examples of transmission electron micrographs. Uh, this shown here is a ribos it's a ribosome, it's a mitochondria with ribosomes attached around the outside. So this thing here is your mitochondria uh, and you've got lots of uh, tiny ribosomes, you see the ribosomes there, about two nanometers big. So you can see something which you would not be able to see with the light microscope. Uh, here, another cell. These again are various different um, mitochondria. And you've got something which is probably a Golgi body or the um, Interplasmic reticulum shown here, um, and so on and so on. So lots of different uh, organelles, tiny cell parts, and we'll look more organelles in a later presentation. Scanning electron micrograph, uh, the electron beams are angled so that the electrons bounce off the outside, as we said, and it converts into a 3D image. So it's not quite as high a magnification factor, maybe only 200,000. Uh, they're often artificially coloured, so you can get a false colour image. So you can see, obviously, they've coloured these red blood cells in red to make them look like red blood cells. Um, Here's a, an outline of an electron microscope. I don't think you need to know in that much detail what they uh, actually the names of the key parts are, the print, it's the principle of how it works, that's the idea. So the electrons are, are sent down, they are focused, use magnets to focus the uh, electrons rather than glass lenses to focus them. Uh, onto the specimen, it hits the specimen, you bounce it off and get an image of what it's like. There's a YouTube video uh, reference here. Uh, if you are on the original presentation, just click on it, either that or you can just copy the, the, the list down and then go to the YouTube reference and have another look at this particular presentation. Not one of mine, I should say. Uh, so, uh, making a good comparison between the two is a popular exam question, for example, compare the differences between these uh, light microscopes. You can see the uh, difference between the resolving power, the magnification, uh, with light microscopes, sometimes you can look at things which might be alive and thin, small sections. Got to be dead for an electron microscope. Um, you might not necessarily need to stain them uh, or any, uh, uh, add, you can add colour to them. Whereas electron microscope, always black and white, you can false colour them later. Uh, light microscopes within the budget of school, uh, electron microscopes, universities, research laboratories, so might be able to use those. 
Uh, so I think we kind of principally considered advantages and limitations, uh, but if you might get asked a question about how is idea of advantages, disadvantages, rather than compare them, um, the resolution is higher in an electron microscope, more detailed image, you can get more detail of the organelles, uh, and you can use a three-dimensional image if it's, uh, it's scanning electron microscope. Disadvantages, uh, you have to use a vacuum, they're expensive in comparison to light microscopes, uh, and you need to be highly trained to be able to do it. Uh, Some to play with, again, if you've got the real presentation, you can see what which uh, which statement matches to which. These are scanning microscopes. These were a new one on me. There's a new into the new A-level curriculum this year. Um, they are relatively new technology, sometimes called confocal microscopes or laser scanning confocal microscopes. Uh, these use laser light to scan an object point by point and assemble the pixelated picture on the computer screen. Um, and here's some very pretty laser scanning microscope images. You can see they are high resolution and high contrast uh, and they have depth of focus so you can see different sort of layers within things um, that microscopes can therefore be used to clearly observe the whole specimens as well as cells. Uh, so these are embryos of different organisms, so if I remember right. Um, they can be used by the medical profession. This uh, is an example of the uses to look at fungi within the cornea of an eye patient. So somebody who has a fungal infection of their eye can actually look at how uh, the eye has been uh, infected by using this particular specimen and it's used mostly in research again not really something in use in schools it's something that is used for research so uh, short of this presentation what have we looked at we've looked at the difference between magnification and resolution in the part one we also looked at uh, across this section use of microscopy to observe and investigate different types of cells particularly eukaryotic cells uh, and the use of the formula. Now remember you've got some uh, opportunity to have practice. I'm expecting you to come back with at least one question from the lesson to be able to tell me, uh, demonstrate you've done this. Remember also that you should have make, be making notes. Go back, pause the presentation, watch the presentation over again at least once and then make your own notes and then the lesson will come to make sure you've understood all this and go through some of the key points. Okay, see you later.